go ahead, Ricardo. So good afternoon uh, from my side as well. I'm uh, very happy to be here today. It's always uh, um, uh, a challenge or a very interesting uh, opportunity to, to hold a speech uh, in front of young uh, engineers. Um, maybe just a couple of words uh, on, uh, on myself. I'm uh, uh, a mechanical engineer. I graduated in Bologna, well, 100 years ago. And uh, I'm uh, relatively old. Uh, relatively old means uh, today I will be 49, which is uh, enough uh, to, to say that I'm uh, uh, in, a, in a position or in a condition which makes me uh, in a critical point uh, for, for to do my job, let's say, in a positive way. My job is uh, I'm head of uh, concept development, which means in Lamborghini that I've got the, I would say, the pleasure, the, the honor and the pleasure to make the first stage of every new project. Uh, so my desk uh, more or less came most of the idea of the company and uh, I'm, uh, uh, I've got the due to start with a few indications from the company uh, what, which kind of car we want to do and uh, actually transform these ideas in a product. Uh, the reason why, and, and in between this activity, there are also the responsibility to coordinate innovation, uh, which means uh, which are the knowledge, the competences, the ideas we have and we want to introduce into the new product range or in the new product. And this is where my age is, uh, is uh, tricky because uh, uh, as I mentioned, I close to be 50 and this means that I have more than 20 years of experience. Experience is uh, nice, you can always rely on it, but uh, it uh, drives uh, to uh, or it drives to the risk uh, to fall into an, an attitude which is uh, um, summarized by the sentence uh, which I, I'm scared of, uh, which is uh, we always did this way, which is the opposite of being innovative is uh, is a way to rely on the past and not look uh, at the future. For this reason, what I would like to discuss with you today or to present you today are four sentences which I use uh, as a kind of medicine against uh, that uh, previous attitude, uh, against the attitude of uh, relying on the past instead of uh, uh, looking to the future, looking to what uh, what are the opportunities and the challenges we have in front of us? The first sentence uh, I would like to discuss with you is, uh, uh, is uh, this one from uh, Mr. Nolan Bushnell. Um, before uh, starting this, uh, this uh, while preparing this presentation, I uh, gave myself the, the task not to mention too much uh, uh, Steve Jobs, uh, which is difficult for me because I'm a, a Macintosh evangelist since uh, 1986, where probably most of you were not even born. Um, and so I didn't quote him, I didn't mention him, I just uh, uh, let you or drive you notice that this sentence uh, comes from a book called uh, Finding the New Steve Jobs. And the sentence is everyone who's ever taken a shower has an idea. It's the one who gets out of the shower, dries off and does something about it, who makes a difference. Um, that's the first concept I would like to discuss with you uh, or to present you. Uh, I've got three daughters, 12, uh, nine and eight years old. And it, when I chat with them, they come with a huge amount of ideas. And I would say 99% of them are something more related to, to flying on to Mars, uh, but there are some ideas which make even have sense uh, in a practical world. But what is common is that they are throwing a stone. They are just saying, I've got this idea. And then they do, they go back to play. Uh, that's uh, uh, the, the attitude to get, have an idea, transform the idea in a project, and then the project in a product is, uh, one of the most uh, uh, 
important attitude you can have in your life as a technician and as, as en engineers in the future. And uh, I have to admit, and that's why I would like to, to talk also about my company, uh, that I'm very lucky because uh, this attitude, the ability to transform, uh, uh, to transform uh, ideas in, uh, in project and products is uh, a key point uh, for a company like Lamborghini. Lamborghini produces a, a luxury sports car, which are, I would say, on one side, uh, useless. On the other side, probably one of the most exciting products you can produce as an engineer. And um, to, to give value to this kind of product, the ability to say it's new, it's different, it offers something which is uh, completely far from, uh, from what is uh, normal on the market is a very important opportunity. And that's why uh, one of the reasons why in Lamborghini we are pushed to, to dry off and, and do something about ideas is that that's a powerful selling argument for the company. And it's also because the company actually gives uh, us opportunities also in a concrete way to transform our uh, ideas and products. One of the most powerful way is uh, what you see in this, uh, in this page. These are just three examples of what we call few of cars. Few of cars are car in very limited uh, uh, numbers. And uh, as a byproduct, this means that they are car which are awfully expensive. Awfully means uh, more than 2 million of euros. Uh, this is not, uh, in my perspective, a way to make money. My message to, in, in this moment is uh, if you get good ideas, if you are able to bring innovation to customer, to product, to, to, to the world, you will always find a way to make that product viable. As we mentioned before, we are technician. And this means that normally you can have very simple ideas which make you rich. But on a technical point of view, what is fascinating is normally what is complex and complexity comes at a cost. So it's very important for innovation to have the opportunity to deploy the ideas. And on the other side, it's important to live in, a, in an ambient which pushes you through innovation. So I wish you all the opportunity to choose your company, choose the company where to spend your career. Uh, Always have a look on uh, what uh, the company offers in terms of uh, availability of the company to express yourself. Um, these examples you see here are what, uh, uh, what Lamborghini produces and normally what then allows us to develop ideas which are fallen down in, uh, in, standard, pro in standard product, standard for a Lamborghini point of view. For instance, in the middle of the slide, the Centenario was the first uh, super sport car with a four-wheel steering system, which was developed on that product and then brought to uh, normal production cars. Uh, the last one was the Cyan. I'm very proud of that because the, the super cap which powers the Cyan was my idea. And uh, uh, it allowed us, these this very expensive cars, to develop a system which uh, we hope we will be able to bring also in uh, uh, more common cars. Do we depend on that? Uh, so in a, in a different way, does a, a company depend on availability of such a product? Of course, it makes it easier to work, but the answer normally is uh, no. Let's take another example, which is a, a way to, to communicate also the attitude I suggest to you in your work. Um, a few years ago, we had the task to make a start-stop system, so a system which is able to switch off the engine at traffic light. And it was needed on the Aventador, which has a big V12. Cranking an engine in that condition is very difficult, and it was basically impossible with the batteries. So we, instead of giving up, we completely changed the approach. We developed a very, very small battery and a supercapacitor, which is the yellow thing in, uh, in the picture. Uh, that system is very successful. It's cheap, it's light, and it's something which works perfectly cheap for a Lamborghini standard, of course. 
and it's on a serious car. So if you look to things with the ability to find a challenge and an opportunity in every problem, then innovation is uh, uh, possible basically in every, in every market, in every system, especially if you consider uh, approaches which are non-conventional. That's another example. It's again the Cyan. In the back of the car, there are uh, four small flaps which uh, allows uh, heat to exit from the engine compartment. Normally, if you do this in a, in a car, even in a more standard car, you have electric motors, electronics, wiring, uh, and uh, an ECU which controls everything, which is weight and cost. We approached the problem in a totally different way. Instead of using those systems, we put smart material springs. Smart materials are metal alloy, which change their shape because of temperature. So there are springs, which when there are above 75 degrees, became longer spontaneously. And in a completely automatic way, the springs became longer and they just opened the flap. Again, get the idea, dry up out of the shower and start thinking how to apply your ideas to products. It's a, a very powerful way to introduce innovation in your product and in your life, because it's a very interesting approach to profession. Another sentence which is uh, uh, always helping me, uh, this is uh, uh, from Harry Ford, and it's uh, <clears throat> a very interesting point from my perspective. Uh, also, my argument that I discuss with my marketing friends, if I'd listen to customer, I'd given them a faster horse. This is a risk we all have. Our brain, my brain, not just our, my brain is lazy, is again the first sentence that we always did this way. We tend to think uh, to everything in our life as an increment. We want uh, a little bit faster car. We want a little bit bigger house. We want uh, a little bit more money. We want what we know, but a little bit more. That's the faster horse. And the faster horse approach is uh, very common. It's uh, linked to our biology. Our brain works in this way, as I mentioned. But it's very dangerous. Let's see a different, completely different approach. I always say that Lamborghini was born, was founded in 1963 and was born in 1965, two years later. When Lamborghini was founded, uh, Lamborghini produced a, a very conventional sports car, 350 GT, V12 uh, longitudinal engine in front. It was uh, absolutely a mainstream car. Uh, and it was a, a period, a time in which uh, Enzo Ferrari, who was already Enzo Ferrari, so was already a, a, a giant in the automobile industry, used to say, you never put uh, uh, the carriage in front, front. Horses have to be in front of the carriage, which is a way to say there's a way to make cars, uh, the, tra the traditional one, go on doing this way. And during Motor Show in 1965, when Lamborghini was born, from my perspective, uh, due to the work of a small team of uh, uh, crazy young engineers, between which was uh, Giampaolo Dallara, Lamborghini presented the, the thing you have in the, in the picture. That's called the rolling chassis. So not a car, just a structure, but with mechanics. So with the idea beyond. That car had the, the, the chassis had the V12 engine mounted uh, transversal in the back when everyone else had engine longitudinal in the front. As I mentioned, that's just the opposite of a faster horse. And that's probably one of the most beautiful car in the car industry and in the car history, the Miura. And this is the first car you think at when you mention Lamborghini to people who are alive in that, in that period, in that time. We can have a totally different approach to problems. And that's true in every industry. Um, okay, I can't mention Steve Jobs, so I will not mention the iPhone. But if, uh, if you think to a lot of product, they just show you that you can 
change completely the approach to an existing problem in a way to open a completely different way. Let's make another example coming from the car industry. What's an active aerodynamic? Active aerodynamic is, uh, in the mind of mostly every one of us, a, a big movable, movable wing. So in this scenario, what's a faster horse? A bigger wing. That's a McLaren application. So I can start with the wing and make it bigger. And, they, and then make two wings with additional feature. That's, in my opinion, is always faster horse. It's not bad, but you can have it in a different approach. In my opinion, a much better approach. Please tell me if you can hear the sound. No sound? No, no sound. I'm sorry, I just ticked the, 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 the box, but I failed. So I, I have to exit and enter again, right? Uh, you have to turn off the screen share and turn it back on again and click the share sound box. I was uh, saying, it was my destiny to make this kind of mistake. <laughs> it's going to be this one. Okay, let's see if it works. With a system uh, which has a very small movable component, I would say very stupid movable component, very simple. Uh, it's more or less 35% lighter than the, the existing system on the Aventador, offers the best performances and it's uh, very simple and it's done in a completely different way. So I dare to say definitely is not a faster horse. Another sentence I do really like is from uh, Alan Kay. Alan Kay uh, has won the Turning Prize in 2004. I'm a, a mechanical engineer, so uh, electronics is uh, uh, very difficult for me to, to understand, even if I had to study it a lot in my career. 
Uh, but I suggest you to spend some time to study the life of Mr. Turing. He was one of the, in my opinion, winner of the Second World War with the uh, invention of, uh, of um, computer science as we know it. And by the way, uh, more or less every computer today, every microprocessor is based on a Turing machine. Um, the sentence is from uh, um, an electronic engineer, Alan Kay, and he said, the best way to predict the future is to invent it. That's a big challenge uh, for a company like, like Lamborghini because we are a small company. Uh, Lamborghini is uh, uh, in the art of 2000 people. So it's a relatively small company considering that we are car manufacturer. And then for instance, our best competitor Ferrari is more or less twice our dimension. Um, and so inventing the future is, uh, is very difficult for us. Um, how we do it and why we do it. I think I've mentioned why several times during this, uh, this uh, presentation, it's in our history to be innovative, it's in our history to, uh, to offer products which are somehow revolution. It's also in our history to uh, look at things in different way. But in these, in these years nowadays, we are forced all the transport world, all, all the world of, uh, of uh, vehicles is forced to accept the challenge, to act as in a revolutionary world. We are in front of a, a huge challenge because what we did up to now is at a very high risk. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, as I mentioned, I'm a mechanical engineer. I was responsible for the uh, production for the project and development of the V12, which is in production now in the Aventador. So I do really love combustion engine. Uh, and I'm convinced that the very last drop of gasoline will be burned in a sports car. But on the other side, we have to face the fact that the world is evolving or is changing as in a revolution. And we have to consider that we will have first or later to rethink completely our product. How we do so in a small company where we found ideas uh, and the competences. Well, we do that, for instance, cooperation with cooperation uh, with a university or academical institution. Uh, for instance, we, we have since 2017 uh, cooperation with uh, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology with MIT. Uh, we have cooperation with the University of Bologna, so our local university, but also with Polytechnico in Milan. And also we cooperate with industry and institution which are far from automotive. Um, we are cooperating, of care, okay, with Boeing, with, uh, uh, which is quite... Uh, uh, an interesting uh, uh, cooperation because uh, uh, we learned a lot from aerospace industry about carbon fiber, um, not about the manufacturing, which on which we had, uh, I think, a very huge experience, but on a point which is very interesting for me. Uh, we learned from them how to repair carbon fiber. Maybe that uh, cars have accident and the, the accident may be not too critical to uh, uh, wrap to destroy completely the car. Uh, but repairing carbon fiber in a certified way is very tricky. Uh, we developed together with Boeing a process which was the first one certified by international uh, institution uh, as the safer way to repair uh, carbon fiber cars, which is funny because uh, there was a time in which Ferrari had to repair their carbon fiber car, La Ferrari or Enzo, with the Lamborghini process, which is quite interesting as a, as a, as a say, revenge for a, for a smaller company. Um, another very interesting uh, uh, cooperation we have is uh, with uh, um, uh, hospitals. We cooperate with uh, an institution in Bologna who is a leader in Europe for uh, bones uh, surgery. And we have a cooperation with the Methodist Research Institute in, uh, in uh, Houston, Texas, about the use of carbon fiber uh, components in the body, for instance, from, for prosthesis or, or to support repair in uh, uh, big injuries in bones. 
And, and we're learning a lot from them. So another message I would like to leave to you, keep your mind open. You never know where a good idea come. You never know what, uh, um, what can be the, the, uh, either the source of your inspiration or on the other side, a possible business or a possible area to apply your ideas. Um, really making the exercise to keep your mind open is, is fundamental. And it will be, trust me on this, much more difficult the older you became. And of course, the other source of inspiration for us uh, is uh, dealing with young people, which is basically what I'm doing in this moment. So I'm trying to, <laughs> to let's say on one side inspire you, but on the other side is also an exercise for me. Uh, and we do that also in different way. As I mentioned, we cooperate with a lot of institution, but uh, uh, we have, uh, for instance, training session in, uh, uh, in the company. So there are uh, from, from uh, technical schools, uh, um, guys who come for three or six months uh, to learn Lamborghini techniques. They have uh, lessons and practical activity in the company. And it's a dual instructional system uh, which is, uh, was um, uh, in testing together with uh, uh, our local government and uh, with our uh, sister company, Ducati. And I think it's already at the seventh or eighth year of, uh, of uh, work. And actually it's uh, working very, very fine, not just for the company, but also for the student. It's a nice way for them to enter in a, in, a, in the uh, work of uh, in the world of work and uh, to learn how a company works, which was one of the biggest difference uh, we noticed, for instance, uh, uh, in comparison between Italian student and German student who have this kind of uh, approach since uh, a lot of year. On which fields do we apply that? What are the challenges we have in front of us or my team has in front of, the, of uh, itself? Um, I always uh, make a very uh, simple example. Um, one liter of gasoline, more or less, has the same energy as uh, one kilo of uh, Nutella, you know, the, the, the chocolate cream, and of, uh, I think, if I remember properly, 250 kilos of batteries. So the biggest challenge for everyone in the car industry is. Uh, to solve this problem in how to store energy in the cars, which will be the form. There is a lot of discussion about using hydrogen, about using uh, batteries. Uh, our bet uh, as a company was, uh, as I mentioned uh, with the MIT, to reinvent supercapacitor. We don't have time to, to get into the detail, but that's just a way to say everyone is now investing in batteries. And we decided to invest in something different. It's partially because we are crazy and we want to do things differently, but it's also because uh, we are a small company, as I mentioned. If we put our drop of money into an ocean of money on batteries, it's senseless. We can't really invest in a way to change uh, the development of battery. No one is investing in capacitor. That's why we are. That's why we did, and then we hope that we will get the right return for our investment. Uh, we are going to face challenge in powertrain. Uh, electric engines are older than, than, than me, for sure. Uh, but we have to reinvent how to place them in the car. Because uh, we can do, of course, what is obvious, to take away the thermal engine put in a, and the gearbox, put in an electric machine, and that's done. But we want to, to explore something different. And uh, there's the last challenge, which is... Uh, to reinvent the sound. We sell sound, we sell design, and we sell emotion. And for that, I beg you 40 seconds of patience. I will play another video, which is very short and with no music, so it's normal that you don't hear anything. I always say we are selling the smile. We are selling the fact that uh, you pop down from our cars and maybe you are tired, you have been uncomfortable. 
it's surely by far more uncomfortable rather than in a sedan or in a SUV, but you did really enjoy yourself. And that's my last sentence and my last word. This is one of the most famous sentences in Italian literature and is normally considered as a way to say that in Italy, in politics mainly, uh, you pretend to change everything just to make sure that nothing changes. Uh, it's a very negative sentence. I uh, accepted uh, years ago the challenge to read it in the opposite way. If you want to preserve what has to stay as it is, the smile of the girl, the pleasure in enjoying this kind of product, then probably that's the moment where everything has to change from scratches and uh, innovation, the innovation I'm basically trying to inspire in, in the EU is uh, more important, not just from my company, but I think from all the automotive world. Thank you very much. Okay, so now I think we've reached our time for questions. If you want, you can raise your hands and we'll give you permission to speak. Uh, for now, I'm going to start with the written questions. Also with the written questions, you can send them through the Q&A and you can upvote the questions you would like us to ask Ricardo. <laughs> so the first one comes from Ricardo. <laughs> <laughs> What are some challenges to continue to develop slash produce and sell high revving V10 and V12 engines and still meet the future, still meet future European emissions? Uh, well, uh, I'm not uh, revealing a secret because my boss has already mentioned that the next generation of, uh, of the Lamborghini flagship, which is Aventador today, will have another V12 engine. Um, uh, we have, I think, to, to how do you say, to um, put the problem in a time perspective. On one side, we are convinced that what will be produced in the next uh, five years, so what will enter in the market in the next five years, will probably have uh, a lot of electrification, but still will have an electrical, uh, a thermal engine. Uh, of course, I know, but I will not tell you uh, any detail more, at least from what Lamborghini wants to do. But it's clear that uh, uh, the, the uh, presence of uh, uh, electrification is uh, needed, uh, I would say, not just uh, to um, meet the regulation. Uh, please remember that we want to have people smiling. So if I approach the point just in terms of, uh, I do the most rational car to go from A to B, then I will probably make a full electric car, uh, which is, a, or a very small thermal car. We can discuss about what is more sensible, but not now. Um, on the other side, if I charge on a sports car, 300 kilos of batteries and electric machine. I will make a bad car. It will be worse than today's one. Our challenge is to make a car which is better than today's car. Faster, nicer to drive, uh, um, to generate a bigger smile and make uh, and fulfill requirements. I'm personally convinced that that, that can be done I will not tell you how, but point is, uh, uh, especially in luxury car or in sports car, you can't uh, start from the from the rules. You have to meet the rules, but preserve the product because the product is what makes your company work. And by the way, the product is what makes engineers happy. If you do a car just to fulfill regulation, it's boring. So no one will do that. Thank you so much for your answer. Uh, the next one is from Pedro, who asks, will Lamborghini try to push the organic fibers future like Formula One is trying to do? Let's say we have, uh, we have uh, uh, different opportunities uh, about use of, uh, of uh, organic fibers. Um, 
we live in a land where there were a lot of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, tradition in terms of uh, producing uh, uh, organic fiber for, for tissue. At the moment, we don't have a plan for fibers, but we have plans for other materials uh, which may be uh, generated recycling, uh, um, see, veg generally speaking, vegetables or the residual from uh, manufacturing of other products. And this is from, uh, from our perspective, a very interesting opportunity. I, don't, I can't be more detailed, not just because I don't want, but because this is a very early stage of research. But it's an opportunity we are, we are investigating as, as, as basically every possible opportunity at the moment. We, we are really open to, to every kind of uh, possible innovation in that. There are no programs, so there are no, uh, no uh, business already uh, running. There are no um, activity which are on the perspective of making them to the customer, but we are keeping more than an eye on, on what is uh, happening in these fields. Thank you. I don't know if you'll be able to answer the next one, but Ricardo asks, is Lamborghini interested in joining Porsche's effort to develop e-fuels? That's a nice uh, question. Uh, as I mentioned before, um, let's put it in this way. Lamborghini is a small company. We have to uh, we have to focus on uh, uh, on one side where our contribution uh, to development, generally speaking, uh, can really make a result, and uh, on uh, um, on what the the customer will recognize as our product. So developing e fuels is something which is critical for for a small company because. Uh, you can't really brand the if you will as a Lamborghini, so the customer will have trouble in recognizing that. And on the other side, it's far from the product. So it's a kind of investment which is very expensive and is uh, difficult to get a, a return back. So at the moment, there are no program on, on if you in Lamborghini. We are much more concentrated in, uh, in uh, developing the product uh, to just to close. Is like uh, if Lamborghini started to produce electricity instead of a battery car. That's the, the parallel. So at the moment we are focusing on the vehicle and not on the infrastructure or in the fuel production. Okay, next up we have a live question from Sarah. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Good okay, afternoon. Uh, good afternoon. Thanks for your lecture. Uh, my question is, uh, which project are you the proudest mo the most? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, it's it's. Uh, <laughs> I'm I'm a very lucky person. I have a lot of uh, of uh, project of which uh, uh, I can uh, I can say I'm uh, I'm proud, and I will uh, I will mention. Uh, uh, well, the, only one project is difficult. Uh, well, probably one of the of the most uh, um, uh, fascinating uh, product I've uh, I've uh, ever done was a car which was never produced. Lamborghini in 2014 presented at the Paris Motor Show uh, the first plug-in hybrid of uh, of uh, its history. The, it was a very nice uh, blue car named Asterion. And uh, um, the, the hybrid powertrain of that car was my development. I started from scratch and, uh, with a very small team of, uh, of crazy guys. Uh, and, uh, and you have to think that we started doing that activity in 2009, 2010. So when, when uh, discussing the topics in that way it was very difficult. And uh, the car, um, there's, there's, a, there's the, 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 the blue car, which, uh, which uh, is basically at the moment in the museum. But to develop the powertrain, we made a, a, an Aventador with just uh, with the body of Aventador and the interiors of that uh, plug-in hybrid car, uh, which is, uh, name, was named Tosca, um, like a famous Puccini opera. 
and that was probably my, I mean, the, one of the biggest emotion was when I had the first ride in that car, because it's, uh, that was the first uh, Lamborghini moving without any kind of uh, sound, for instance. Uh, and, uh, and that's uh, amazing. That was amazing. That was really the, the sign that uh, we generate a huge discontinuity in the company. And uh, one of the most uh, uh, fascinating, uh, uh, one of the most fascinating uh, um, prize somehow about that project is that if you look at the specification of the Ferrari SF90, the idea, they do, did it in a different way. They did a, a great job. I don't want you to get me wrong. But still, the, 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 the schematic is very similar because the idea we had is, is, is good. And uh, that's, uh, I'm very proud of that thing. Really nice. Thanks. You're welcome. I'm sorry, I forgot to turn on my mic. Uh, now we also have, uh, oh, I thought we had another raised hand. Apparently not. So one other question from the Q&A is regarding active aerodynamics and active suspensions, do you work close with control and system engineers? Thank you so much for this opportunity. Uh, we work, um, uh, let's take the example of the, of the uh, active aerodynamics is something I do, do really like. Uh, one of the reasons why we are very happy for that, uh, for that system, which was developed by, by our colleague in a aerodynamic uh, field, uh, is that uh, we develop the whole system, including the controls. So the answer is definitely yes. We, we try to keep as much as possible uh, the control system in house for several reasons, not only, uh, not only, okay, of course, also economics, it's cheaper to do it now rather than paying a, a big, uh, uh, a big uh, uh, supplier, but it's also, it also makes you much more flexible, which is important for a small company. As an example, uh, I started my career in Lamborghini as an engine uh, um, control engineer. So I, I did controls for the engine. And uh, the Aventador has uh, an engine management system, which is fully developed in house. So we don't uh, write uh, uh, C++ code, but we write specific, we basically do all the steps of the V-shape uh, diagram with the exception of writing the code. We cooperate in specifying the hardware. Then the hardware is manufactured only for us. It's I think one of the few ECU able to control a 12 cylinder with only one, uh, uh, one box. So it's quite a challenge. And, uh, um, and we keep the control is now. So it's also a very uh, important, uh, let's say, not sandbox is a wrong concept, is a, is a very important way to try and person which we will play with other controls in their work. So definitely, yes, we try to keep control in house. Thank you for the answer. And uh, next up we have, what is your honest opinion about Ferrari and the main similarities and differences? Um, well, <laughs> I commit to be as much honest as possible. Uh, in, uh, um, I, do, I do really like, I would say, Uh, the other one, when I start, I have no, no trouble in admitting that when we started developing the, the V12 of today's Aventador, we bought a Ferrari engine. At, at that time was the 4, uh, uh, four, uh, four three something, 430, I think. And we studied how they did it. Because uh, in my opinion, Ferrari is doing uh, on, on a defined aspect an, an incredibly good product. I'm uh, not... Uh, uh willing to discuss their their attitude they are doing uh, great things and so i'm i'm, I'm uh, i admire their work uh but on the other side i'm not jealous i mean i'm i'm very happy to be where i am because uh, i would say they are more conservative and the other thing is uh um it's always tricky to say if uh, we are competitor. We play in a similar market for sure, 
But a question I always put to my marketing colleague, and I don't get the answer, uh, is uh, how many Lamborghini customer will uh, or will really consider a Ferrari or or or, or vice versa. Um, there are bad words in Italian to express what uh, Lamborghini may be in orange or, or uh, acid green express. Uh, and I don't want to discuss that. I'm just saying we sell a vision of car, which is very different from Ferrari one. Uh, there are more or less 12 years of different in the age of our customer. We sell cars to younger customer because uh, uh, the, the, the message we, we, we bring with our design, with our concept, with our philosophy is much different. So of course we play in the same market. Are we competitor? Maybe yes. Uh, I admire their work. They are really, a, 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 at the end of the day, they are, are probably the most famous brand in the car industry and no, no problem to recognize that. But I would say on one side, I'm very proud of, uh, of what we are doing. And uh, uh, in the last uh, 20 years, I've been in Lamborghini since the end of 2000. So I'm there since uh, 20, more or less 21 years. Uh, we moved from being <clears throat> very far from their production to be very close to them. And I'm optimistic that we will beat them in the next, uh, in the next year. So I'm happy to beat the best, let's say. Thank you so much. Uh, next up, we have a live question from Pedro. Can you turn on your mic? Uh, are you hearing me? Yeah. Uh, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it works. Oh, okay. Uh, how how could you how would you describe a typical day in a Lamborghini factory? <laughs> well, it's strictly dependent on, on 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 your role. My typical day in Lamborghini is uh, is um, uh, some let's say I'm I'm um, I've got the, the the pleasure and the privilege to have three daughters, so it, it starts relatively late in the morning because I have to bring the daughters at school. So it starts in the area of 8.30. And uh, let's say it's, it's a mixture of, uh, um, of uh, technical work. I still do, I'm, I'm a first report of the technical director. So my boss is uh, the CTO of, uh, of Lamborghini, but I still have the, the honor to do a lot of technical work. But uh, there are of course, a lot of activity which are more related in coordinating a company. Uh, oh, we mentioned before that uh, to, 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 to bring innovation into company, uh, you have to you know, dry up and, and, and start doing things. Start doing things means also uh, prepare the company to change, to adapt new technology, to adapt new product. And that's a very complex work because uh, at the moment we are producing more or less 5,000 euros per year which is a lot for a small company in Lamborghini. To guarantee that you can make this more or less 30 car per day, you have to make sure that what you think in the early stage of the project is something four years after production can produce at the right uh, step, at the right uh, rhythm, with the right volume and the right cost. So I think every day in Lamborghini is basically a mixture between uh, the ability or the opportunity to develop a new concept, new idea, uh, of course, there's a, a lot of work. I always say that there's a, you have to do properly the 80% of the work, which is, a, uh, I don't want to say boring, but somehow is uh, office work, uh, designing, uh, making projects, coordinating other people and so on in a way that you have the 20% of time where you can really dream. And 20% time of dreaming is a lot. I can make you a long list of companies where you may dream uh, 2% of your time, or, or you can't dream at all. So uh, I'm very happy for that. But that's uh, always a, a balance between what you need to have uh, to make things happen, not just in fantasy, but to, to, to make them product. And that is uh, 
uh, coordination is working together with other entities with the project manager production quality logistic uh, i always say that uh, uh, to sell a car the the instruction manual is as important as the engine because if you don't have the instruction manual you can't sell the car so you have to make sure that everything works up to the very last detail and that's why making cars is fascinating it's the most complex product complex product my mother can 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 use the next in complexity is the airplane but my mother can't pilot an airplane and this is important in the attitude you have in your work you have to prepare your product to be used by everyone Thank you so much. We also have another live question from Nunu. Can you, can you turn on your mic? Yes, hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, hi, um, you mentioned there are three and six months long student programs. Um, so do you know if students have a chance to stay with the company when the program is over? It depends on times. Uh, the, most of the programs, they are related to students which are not at the end of their career. For instance, in, in there are schools, uh, uh, secondary level schools uh, in, uh, so in, in Italy so, uh, to, for, for students between 14 and 19 years. And they have a summer uh, stage or a three month program even in, in the third, the fourth, and the fifth year. So when they have to be, could be back to school in any case. So we, we, uh, we get, uh, uh, we um, alternate time at school and time in the company because they are not at the end. Normally, uh, most of the, uh, of course, uh, there are a period in which uh, from, for those students to go back and to stay in the company where they are at the end of their uh, school career is relatively easy. When we launched the production of Eurus, we had a lot of uh, uh, position open and most of those, uh, those person uh, stay in the company. It's the same with, uh, with uh, um, people who graduate from university. We usually have uh, Okay, in, in the last year with the COVID, it was more complex, but we usually have uh, students which are making uh, uh, their thesis work in the company. And of course, if there are positions, the best stay, that's depend on time. Thank you so much for the, for the answer. I will read another one from the Q&A. So we have the top one is from Pedro who asks, was designing a normal car for non normal people ever part of Lamborghini's idea? Uh, no, it was not uh, to make, uh, uh, we, we normally have uh, the opposite challenge. Uh, the, the Urus is an example. We had, uh, uh, we tried to have something which is not, which is based, uh, uh, that the URUS is, uh, is uh, based on a, an Audi platform. And our task was to make it uh, much more unconventional than, than the starting point. So I, I never th thought that we can make something normal. Um, you have also to consider this way. Normal cars. Uh, uh, when at the very beginning of my career, I worked for, I worked for Fiat. I worked on the multiple project, so it's the CNG one, by the way, so really the, the cheaper one. Uh, making that car kind of car is not easier, it's different. If you want to make even only 500 cars per day, which is a low volume production in Fiat or in Audi, you have to make sure that the process of those cars, which are simple, the cars itself, it's simple, the product is simple. The process is a chaos because you can't really lose a single euro because you don't have margin. So the production has to be perfect. And the investment to be competitive in that market is so high that it's very difficult for a startup company uh, to, to enter in this market. So, Lamborghini is a small company making a car, as you say, normal for normal people. Let's say a car 
in the area of 20, 25,000 euro, which is already half luxury in Italy at least, uh, brings with you a huge investment, which is normally very difficult for a small company. And on the other side, we have part of our group, so they are already doing that, so you don't need to. Thank you for the answer. Uh, we now have a live question, if I'm not mistaken, from Diogo. Yes, hello. Can hello. Yes, uh, first of all, thanks for the presentation. Um, last week I attended a talk from um, a Facebook AI researcher and he said he still had um, a lot of freedom in, in his work because also because he didn't have to come, with, come up with a product to sell. From what I understand, Lamborghini also has um, the feel to take a different approach and innovate, but in the end, it still needs to come up with a product to sell. And I imagine you still have deadlines to, to, to meet. Do you find it hard to balance the need to innovate and make different uh, products <laughs> and to have to come up with uh, um, no, a new product to sell in a deadline? Uh, okay, let's put it in this way. The company is, uh, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not working in a research center in, as it is normally intended, maybe a university or something similar. Even to get money to develop uh, an idea or a concept, I have to sell it internally, which does not mean that I can't make any research, okay? So it happened to me to try developing things which were wrong. Uh, I don't know if you are familiar with the concept of innovation funnel, but basically <clears throat> every, every um, I would say a healthy company has a, a, a defined amount of uh, opportunity to start with new ideas, which are far from uh, uh, a production uh, a production concept, let's say, and, which, uh, and on which you normally invest a small amount of money just to understand if they can fly or die. Some of these ideas just die because you try and realize that there were problems, so you uh, you didn't uh, consider at the beginning or uh, that they were, um, say, uh, and then maybe to make them work, you need the technologies which are not available yet, control power or whatever. But normally, at least in our company, uh, if those, for the ideas which still survive to this first screening, then you begin to have pressure to get to production. And as I mentioned before, the possibility to use a few off cars, so very limited in volume, very high in price, is a way to make kind of intermediate step. You get to production in very small number uh, with customer which are somehow your colleague in development and they are happy to do that. They take part to development. In, we get a lot of feedbacks from them about their cars and we take a very small risk on them because their cars are very few. You know where they are, so you can check with them continuously. And uh, they are very expensive, so they basically repay themselves. But generally speaking, the pressure to get to production, from my perspective, is positive. Um, it doesn't really matter if I write no, it doesn't really matter is wrong. Don't get me wrong, please. But the visibility I have as an engineer with an ALA system in the car who made the Nürburgring lab is uh, much, much bigger than the visibility I can get writing the best scientific article on a scientific paper. Then I want to be clear, I, I got, since few years in my cooperation with MIT, I had to go back to school. I had to study chemistry. I, I, I never did it. And I do really appreciate the work of people who have the opportunity to stop their work 
at the study level because I built on their work and they do an incredibly precious work. As I mentioned, we have cooperation with several universities because we find there a lot of idea, a lot of uh, competence, a lot of know-how. I'm very happy that they do that. And Newton said that uh, he uh, uh, discovered the, the, the universal gravity law because he went on the shoulder of giants. I, all, I tend to say that industry stands on the shoulder of university, of people who study. It's, it's incredibly important even to study basic science, mathematics, chemistry, physics, not just engineering. We built on those competence. But from my perspective, the thrill of presenting a car like the SPJ you've seen or the engine, it's something which is uh, so nice that I want to get that thrill. I want to get in production. I don't want to stop before. For me, it's not, it's not a limit to go in production. It's, a, it's a, a thing which pushes me. I want to see things in the hand of customer, as many customers as possible, because that's, uh, I would say that's part of the prize. That's really part of the prize. People, I, I had the pleasure to meet a customer and the customer saying, uh, I did really enjoy your product is it so rewarding that I will not bargain anything else. I, I want to get that. I want a, a customer saying, I did enjoy your car. I have to admit, it, it is not frequent to, to, to cross people driving Lamborghinis. But it happens that when I have the opportunity, I knock to the window and ask, do you like the car? Because that's what, what I mean, I'm working for that. It, for, for, for that idea that what I'm doing is in the hand of people and, will, and they will enjoy my product. If I don't go in production, I miss that. Okay. Uh Thank you for the answer. I hope it enlightened you, Ogu. Uh, next up, we also have another live question from Mariana. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, hi, good evening. Hi, um, this is kind of a funny question, just out of curiosity. Uh, what kind of car do you drive? <laughs> <laughs> As I mentioned before, I got uh, uh, three daughters. So I have a, an Audi station wagon. <laughs> <laughs> the, car, the number of the daughter is proportional to the dimension of the car. So I never drove a Lamborghini. <laughs> uh, and also, it, you have also to consider a thing. I got a standard salary. I'm, uh, I know that I'm making a luxury product. That's nice as an engineer. But I want when I go to holiday or I go to a restaurant, I want to uh, enjoy the moment. And uh, it happened to me. To, to have a Lambo for a weekend, for instance. Uh, I enjoy driving, but if I stop to have a, a lunch in a restaurant, mm -hmm. I look to find a table from which I can look at the car. <laughs> so that's not, not, uh, not standard for me. My standard is a standard, a normal, uh, a normal station wagon car. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, and uh, next up we have a written question from Katerina who asks, who says, hello, the lecture was amazing and I really loved it. Do you think we as mechanical engineer graduating in a few years will still have the opportunity to work in the development of internal combustion engines? So, uh, First of all, I'm very lucky because I had this opportunity. So, uh, and I, trust me, the internal combustion engine is a wonderful machine. Um, um, it's very difficult to answer. Let's say, uh, my opinion is, uh, Yes, because uh, uh, there are characteristics 
uh, of the internal combustion engine, which will be around for a lot of time and which will make this product uh, around for a lot of time. Uh, I read a few, few days of a couple of weeks ago, a statement from uh, BMW. They said, we are not done with the internal combustion engine. And uh, uh, it's a kind of machine which, which has a, a value, which in my opinion will stay for a long time. Its role will change. I would say its role is already changing. You see that in the cars uh, we are producing or that most of the car manufacturers are producing. It will be much more often combined with, uh, uh, with um, electric system. Uh, it will be part of a more complex powertrain, but in my opinion, it will be around for a long time. There's a sentence I really like from, uh, from uh, Professor Peter Kalisenekal. He always say, the future is eclectic, not electric, eclectic. There will be different solution for different answer. I think you will have the opportunity to work on internal combustion engine as a machine and as a part of a more complex system. This may make your work even more interesting rather than what I did in, 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 in my year as a responsible of the development of the V12. Uh, what I just can, I would like to suggest to you, uh, be open, keep yourself open, open to internal combustion engine, to every possible solution you will find around. Uh, when I was asked to leave uh, engine development to do a different path in my career, it was a very difficult moment for me. I have to say, I got much more after that moment than I had before. So I'm sure you will have the opportunity. I suggest you to keep your mind open to everything you, you have in front of you. At the moment you are still studying. So you imagine what may be your job, but you didn't experience yet. So you may find the electricity amazing. You may end in making jet engine, who knows? Uh, just the last point, AVL, so one of the most important uh, um, engineering company in Europe uh, is developing internal combustion engine fueled by hydrogen. So who knows? Thank you so much. And next up, we'll have the last question, unfortunately. But Andrea asks, can you say three interesting facts about Lamborghini that most people don't know? Three interesting facts. Oh. Well, that's that's uh, difficult because we are um, we are uh, let's say quite a quite uh, uh, well known brand, so well known company. Uh, so let's let's try with different things and see if uh, if uh, they are really unknown. Um, Lamborghini. Uh, in its history made a lot of uh, uh, funny cars, uh, cars which are, uh, which are uh, jumping from uh, really different uh, sectors. Uh, I'm pretty sure most of you know that uh, uh, we already made uh, an SUV in the 80s, what was called uh, LM02. It was produced in some hundreds of uh, LM, of, uh, uh, number, so that's known. Maybe it's less known that uh, we competed in a in Acropolis rally with Sandro Munari on that car. That's maybe a, a thing no, no, not too many people know. Uh, another thing which uh, perhaps not too many people know that is that uh, um, we were between the first company in the world to develop a full carbon fiber car based on a production uh, on a production concept it was uh, again in the 80s it was based on the shape of the Countach there was only one car uh, which was uh, tested and then destroyed in a crash test uh, to test the uh, quality of the of the result and of the simulation um, uh, perhaps something more uh, more recent uh, um, 
Well, we are probably, again, on carbon fiber, the only company in the world who has, uh, I would say, 95% of the uh, manufacturing process of carbon fiber in-house. We buy, um, uh, we buy fiber, we buy tissue, and uh, we can do in-house all the rest from the tooling, uh, manufacturing, uh, development, uh, uh, model uh, calculation for the uh, structure project, manufacturing of the tool, manufacturing of the parts. The monocoque of the Aventador is 100% made in Lamborghini and we uh, built a, a warehouse and, the, and the, a section of the company to have the room to do that. That's I think is an unicum in uh, in Lamborghini, in, in, in the car industry. I don't know if that's known or not. I'm sorry, but that's, uh, <laughs> it's difficult to say what is unknown outside, but that's three facts at least. And I'm sure they are three facts. I apologize if they were already known. So unfortunately we've reached the end of our presentation. So Ricardo, if we've taken up much of your time and uh, so this is our last keynote of Mechanists and we've, we've ended in a high note. So thank you, Ricardo, for setting our invitation. The talk was really interesting. And thank you everyone for staying with us and watching all the keynotes. And uh, we hope to see you next year. And thank you everyone for, for participating. And Ricardo, thank, thank you, you very again. much. Thank you very much for, for the opportunity. It's been uh, really a pleasure and I hope uh, uh, you all did enjoy. Yes. Bye and uh, good luck. Thank you, Ricardo. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone.